all the military branches are full of traditions. We each have our own for various reasons throughout the years that we've picked up. But, and I will die on this hill, the Navy has the craziest traditions of all, hands down. And one of the craziest we do is called crossing the line. Now, crossing the line goes by a couple other different names like Wog Day, Shellback Initiation, King Neptune's Initiation, but it's still crossing the line. And what that means is the day you go over for the, the equator for the first time, shit's gonna get real. <laughs> now, though this is a tradition in the U.S. Navy, this is pretty much done by all navies and even merchant ships, and it actually predates the United States and most other countries, because as long as sailors have been sailing and crossing over the equator, they've come up with a way to celebrate that. Now, crossing the line has a lot of history behind it. It goes back a long time. And in recent decades, it's been kind of toned down because people have died. Shit used to get real crazy back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I'm going as far back as just the 1980s. We'll circle back to that in a minute, but let's start with what crossing the line is and some terminology. So when it comes to crossing the line, there are two types of people. The honorable, trusty, majestic shellback and the filthy, slimy, useless polywogs. Now, those who have crossed the line before at base are known as shellbacks. Now, there are different types of shellbacks, and I'll get into that. But for those that haven't crossed the line, they are polywogs, or just shorthand, wogs. You see, wogs are filthy, dirty, slimy little creatures, and they need to be cleansed and blessed by King Neptune himself before they can transcend out of their lowly, useless existence to being the glorious shellback. Now, on this day, rank don't matter, at least not in the way you think it does. If you have a senior chief who has never crossed the line and a third class who has, well, the roles flip. Because you see, rank is kind of determined by who's been shellback longer. And he who has been shellback the longest gets to play King Neptune. And the second longest gets to play Davy Jones for King Neptune's royal court. Because you have to go through a lot of stuff throughout the day. And at the end, you still have to be blessed by King Neptune to complete your trials and ascend the rank of shellback. Now, my shellback initiation was interesting, to say the least. My day started off at 2 a.m., with a bucket of cold water to the face after I had just gotten off watch at 10, so I had only had a couple hours sleep in between there. And I immediately had to get up and start putting on my uniform inside out, underwear on the outside of my pants, and shit like that. And then I had to crawl around on my hands and knees, because as a wog, you are not worthy to look upon the honorable shellback. So you must keep your head down as you crawl around like a toddler. Now you will do this across the whole ship for the first few hours of the morning, Going to various areas as people just berate you and find interesting ways to punish you. Maybe you're doing push-ups. Maybe you have to roll around on your back and squeal like a top. Dumb shit. However, if you're a special case and you have thoroughly annoyed people for a long time, you might, at some point in the proceedings, end up with a small bottle of Tabasco poured down your ass crack. Even clear eyes ain't going to get the bloodshot look out of your brown eye after that. Now, after a bit of having to crawl around the whole ship on non-skid, up and down ladderways, we eventually got fed breakfast where they, okay, they laid down some parchment paper on the ground so it wasn't like the food was on on the ground, but we had to lay on our stomachs with our hands behind our back and then proceed to eat this oatmeal noodle food coloring mess and no one would touch it, but I ain't gonna lie, I was hungry, and dear God, that was one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in the Navy. They actually seasoned that shit with, like, cinnamon and brown sugar. It was delicious. After that, we then went through a series of obstacles, or little checkpoints where we had to do some task. And, like, the first one I came across was you had to do ten push-ups. Doesn't sound hard, does it? 
Yeah, try doing 10 push-ups while your buddy sits there with a fire hose to blow out your arms the second you get to push-up number nine and goes, oh, you have to start over. I did a couple hundred push-ups by the end of that day. And there were multiple stages with dumb stuff just like that. And at any point, one of those stages and the person running it thought you failed, they would send you back to the very beginning to start all over. I was second to last to finish out of my command only because one other person was more annoying than me. King Neptune himself sent me back to the start like four times. Now that being said, the goofy, fun, sometimes aggravating games like that weren't always the way it used to be done. You see, it used to be a lot more physical. Way back in the age of sail, it used to get downright deadly. People would be thrown off the front of the ship to be forced to tread water, sometimes until they drowned on accident. Some people would get beat too hard and then die from the injuries they suffered during the initiation. It used to be real fucking dangerous. And I'm talking up until the modern era, because I knew sailors back from the 1980s that said they would get beat with what they nicknamed shillelaghs, where someone would take a fire hose, cut notches into an old fire hose, soak it in water, and then let it dry so it would get salty and crusty, and then whip people with it until they had scars. But once you completed everything, you got this. And also, this to keep in your wallet. That way you can always prove you were a shellback. Because though this is kind of like an unofficial ceremony, so it doesn't go on your DD-214 or anything like that, you do get a card and a plaque to memorize the occasion on where you cross the line. Because where you cross the line actually matters. If you just cross the equator, you're a shellback. If you cross the equator at the 180th meridian, you're a golden shellback. If you cross at the prime meridian, you're an emerald shellback. If you cross near Lake Victoria, you're an ebony shellback. And, on a rare note, and mind you, this is so rare, I've never met anyone that has this. Instead of crossing the equator, if you cross the Arctic Circle and do this, you're a blue nose. Now, if you're asking yourself why anyone would do this just to get a piece of paper and dress weird, it's because once you do it, you get to do it to someone else. And yes, we do dress up in crazy get-ups and costumes for this day. Now, to all you young sailors that are coming up on your first time of crossing the equator, remember, this is voluntary. You don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. But if you decide to do this and then quit halfway through, be warned, no one on that crew will ever let you forget that. And it will be so much worse than just seeing it through to the end. Because now you're going to have to deal with your entire tour on that ship with Everybody letting you know you quit.